Hello, this is Mr. Doro. Today we're going to determine subatomic particles, and by the end of this, I'd like you to determine the number of each subatomic particle in an atom or an ion. Well, first of all, we need to know what a subatomic particle is. If we break down the word, sub means under or below, atomic means the atom, and particles just mean really small things. So these are the things that make up an atom. And if you look over on the right-hand side here, we have the three subatomic particles, an electron, a proton, and a neutron. And also it has the charges. If you look inside of this in the gray, this electron has a negative charge. It's located outside the nucleus. The nucleus is this center part right here. The protons are in red, and they are a positively charged. And the neutrons are in blue, and they have no charge written in them because they are neutral. Each atom on the periodic table contains subatomic particles. What makes them different is how many of each of those particles they have. Now when you look at your periodic table, you can get some good information about the subatomic particles. This is an example of carbon from the periodic table. And we have a number up on top, usually on top, and this is the atomic number. The atomic number is very important because the atomic number always equals the number of protons. I'm going to put P plus for protons because it has a positive charge. And so the atomic number always equals the number of protons. In many cases it equals the number of electrons also, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. The other thing is it also has an average atomic mass. I'm going to add average on here because this is an average of all the naturally occurring isotopes, which we'll talk about what those mean later. We don't have a mass of 12.01 will be giving a mass number later on. But this is important information to know from the periodic table, mostly the atomic number. So now we're going to find the number of subatomic particles for atoms. And first of all, we need to know that an atom, by definition, is going to have no net charge, which means that the positive charges cancel out the negative charges, and overall charge is going to be zero. That ends up being pretty important when we're determining the, num the number of electrons. This is nuclear notation right down here. And so you're going to have the symbol, and it just has an X there right now. But you're going to have the mass number. Now, the mass number is different than the average atomic mass. It's going to be right around the same area that the average atomic mass is on your periodic table. But that's an average of all the naturally occurring isotopes. This is going to be for one specific atom. And so this will be a whole number every time. You don't just look at the periodic table and round it up or round it down. What you do is I'll either give it to you or I'll give you the information that you need to find it. Now that mass is determined by two things. That mass is based on the number of protons plus the number of neutrons in the nucleus. They are so massive compared to the electrons. The electrons weigh, weigh almost nothing compared to the protons and neutrons. So that mass number together, and you can see, is Z plus N, where Z is the atomic number, which never changes on the periodic table, and N is the number of neutrons. So the protons plus the neutrons give you this mass number every time. The atomic number never changes. So I'm going to give you an example. We're going to do sodium, which is Na, and I'm going to say the mass number is 24. Now that's, on the periodic table, the average atomic mass is 22.99, but I'm telling you specifically this one has a mass of 24. Now you can determine the number of protons by looking on the periodic table. When you look there, you see the atomic number for sodium is 11. Now we have all the information that we need to find these three things protons, electrons, and neutrons. And I put it as P-E-N because it spells pen. So protons, remember, are always the atomic number. And so there are how many? Well, that's right, 11 protons in here. The, since this is an atom, and here's how you know it's an atom, because it has no charge written up here. This is where a charge goes if there's an imbalance of protons and electrons. Since there's no charge, then you know that there, it has the same number of protons as it does electrons. So how many electrons does this one have? That's right, 11 electrons. And then to find the number of neutrons, remember that this mass number right over here, this mass number is the protons and the neutrons added together. So out of this 24, 11 of those are protons, and so we have to find the difference. This 24 
minus 11 to get the number of neutrons. And so when we do 24 minus 11, we get 13 neutrons. The only thing different that we have with ions is that ions have an imbalance oops, imbalance of protons and electrons. It's going to change the number of electrons. That's all the ions change. This is the nuclear notation for the ion of sodium, the sodium ion. And it has the mass number, just like we had before. It has the atomic number, which is always equal to the number of protons. And remember, the mass is the sum, still, of protons and neutrons. But here's the difference. The difference is this has a plus one charge. So if we were to find the protons, electrons, and neutrons for this one, P, E, N, we still find the number of protons by the atomic number. So the protons are going to be 11. The electrons are going to change, though, this time because it says that there's a plus 1. I'll come back to that. And then the number of neutrons, we still find the same way as we did before. This mass right here is the protons and the neutrons together. 11 of those 23 are protons, so we find the difference, 23 minus 11, that gives us 12 neutrons in this case, and then the electrons. In order to find the electrons, there are a couple ways you could think about it. You could think about it as since this is a plus one charge or one plus charge, that means it has one more positive charge than it does negative charges. So it has one more proton than electrons. And if it has one more proton, then what you do is you just say, well, make one less electron, which would be 10 electrons. Now, another way you can think about it is this. If you take that atomic number right here and you do the opposite of whatever the charge is, that will give you the number of electrons. For example, since this is a positive one charge, you would subtract one from 11. So you go 11 minus one, and that would give you 10 electrons. I always go back and check it out though, and I say, okay, well this has got 10 negative charges right here, and this has got 11 positive charges. That's one more positive charge than the negative charges, which makes it a plus one charge. And finally, we have isotopes. Isotopes are the same element, but they have different number of neutrons in the nucleus. And so if you look at these, these are all hydrogen, right on this top one right here. And this has an, a mass number of 1, mass number 2, mass number 3. The atomic number is the same each time because they have one proton each time. But you can see that this one has only one proton, and that's why it has a mass number one. This has a proton and a neutron, that's why it has a mass number two. This has a proton and two neutrons. These are isotopes of each other. They all also have just one electron on there. Same thing with carbon. These are all carbon with six protons in, in the nucleus, but they, this one has 12, a mass number of 12, which means it has six neutrons. This has seven neutrons. This has eight neutrons. Now notice this though too. This says the relative abundance of these isotopes. This is where the average atomic mass comes from. 98.9% of the carbon atoms that naturally show up are carbon 12 with a mass of 12. Only 1.1% are 13, and 0.0001% are carbon-14. That's why the average atomic mass for carbon is 12.01. It's very close to this 12 right here, because most of them are at carbon-12. And so to find protons, electrons, and neutrons for these, you would say that all of these have six protons, all of them have six electrons because they're atoms, but the number of neutrons changes. This one has six, seven, and then eight. Here are six of them for you to try now to find the protons, electrons, neutrons for each one of these. Some of them I didn't give you the atomic number, so you'll have to look them up on your periodic table. Some of them I've given you a charge. If they don't have a charge, then you've got to assume that these are atoms. So good luck. Have these done. Bye-bye.